Hey everyone, I'm here with some of our paleontologists, Carrie and Randy. We've got some paleopathology specimens out here on the table. Can you tell me a little bit about what that means, paleopathology? Yeah, it's really cool. These are all fossils that have evidence of sickness or infection, disease of animals and plants in the fossil record. So can you give me a specific example like this one? Was it diseased? Uh, this is a really special one. So uh, this is a vertebra from an allosaurus, so part of the backbone. And I don't know if you can see, there's a weird sort of semicircular shaped hole in this part of the vertebra. And one possibility is that this was caused by a stegosaurus spike going right through the tailbone and uh, as, as a stegosaurus tried to protect itself. And that's how it died? That's what we can tell about how it died? Um, in this case, uh, probably didn't die from it because we see evidence of new bone growth around the wound. And so that suggests that the allosaurus at least survived for a couple of months. And that's one of the crazy things about paleopathologies is typically we only find evidence of the survivors, things that um, actually made it uh, and were recovering at least partly uh, from their wounds or infections or things like that. Oh, very cool. And some of these other specimens also carry signs of paleopathology? Yeah, so we have a uh, really couple neat fossils here. This is, these are fibulae, so the lower leg bone of two different types of tyrannosaurs that we have. And they're both broken. And as Randy's showing, it's broken right here. And uh, what is exciting for me are the stories that pathologies can tell. Uh, just like Randy was talking about with the stegosaurus and the allosaurus, that bone could have been broken by an ankylosaur, the one that have the big tail club on the back. And it could have just whacked it really hard and uh, broke the leg of the tyrannosaur. So you always think the tyrannosaurs are going to win in a battle, but I would I would peg my bets on uh, Al <laughs> Ankylosaurus here. So we have evidence of injury to these animals. What about evidence of sickness? I know that this year's behind the scenes theme is plagues and pestilence. Can we tell something about that through paleopathology? Yeah, sometimes we can see evidence of uh, sicknesses or um, infections. A lot of times if some, some uh, animal got bitten in the face or bitten somewhere and then uh, it, it got infected, you can actually see that on the bones. Oh, wow. Yeah, you can, this is a great example here. These are two vertebrae that have fused together, but we think it was caused by infection because uh, there's these extra weird holes here where probably the sinus created around the infection was draining. Um, so this is a great example. We also occasionally do even find evidence of um, bone diseases, things like that. Oh, wow. So these specimens back here, what can you tell me a little bit about these? Uh, these are, again, some tail bones. And once again, they've been fused together. So it's actually two tail bones, but then there's all this bone growth in between where they should be separate, uh, but they've fused totally together. And sometimes, it, like this, it's a total mystery as to why they're fused together. Could have been infection, some other injury. Um, we often have to look inside of these bones to be able to diagnose exactly what caused the, the paleopathology. Look inside the bones. How do you do that without cracking them open? <laughs> well, uh, one way to do it is by CAT scanning. So just like you get a CT scan um, at a hospital, but uh, Carrie specializes in another method. Yeah, so what I do is I actually cut open dinosaur bones and look at them under a microscope. And so I make them into thin sections, look at them under a microscope, and you can actually see if it has lines, how old it was, but also if there's actually pathologies. So you can actually see pathologies both on the surface, but also in the microstructure of the tissue. So your research in that way, how does it help us learn about plagues and pestilence? back then. Well, what I think is so interesting is that these were all animals. You know, we, I, it's easier to think for me a mammoth is an animal because we have elephants that look like it today. But dinosaurs are a little bit using your imagination, like take a bird and make it really big and that kind of a thing. And, and so uh, being able to look at the bones themselves tell a story about what the animal's life was like uh, for the individual. That's really interesting. And what is that kind of research called? Uh, histology. So it's the study of bone tissue or tissue. Oh, yeah. very interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, Carrie, I see you have a couple more specimens yeah. over on that side. 
Can you tell us a little bit about these? So I pulled some of our uh, fossil insects that we have in our collection. Uh, some amber, because we always think about Jurassic Park with <laughs> bugs and amber. Uh, and then um, these are really neat. These black ones are actually uh, beetles that were trapped in tar. So uh, close to the tar pits, but we always think about like dire wolves and mammoths getting stuck in tar, but also beetles were stuck in tar too. And uh, it actually gives a smell. It off gases <laughs> the smell of asphalt. So anyway, we'll have this out too, uh, along with microscopes to be able to uh, look look under and, and see some of the um, anatomical parts. <laughs> oh, very cool. I love that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I love these insect fossils because when people think about fossils, they think about shells and bones, but we get some amazing sort of organisms preserved in the fossil record. And that's what's so cool about uh, paleopathologies as well, is that they really tell us about what life was like millions of years ago, what hardships animals faced, what sort of bugs were buzzing around their head, and you know who was eating them and how they dealt with it. We often see bite marks that are healed on bones, and so it really brings these ecosystems, these past worlds, back to life. They're not just dusty old bones. And what can we learn about these past worlds that might help us today in how we understand our environment or our ecology? Does paleontology help us better understand what we're doing today? Definitely. It allows us to understand how uh, organisms and ecosystems change through time in response to various different um, you know, things going on in their world, whether it be climate change or uh, diseases or whatnot. And, um, if we can see sort of how, how past ecosystems have responded, that gives us some, some information as to where we might be going in the future. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us today. It sounds like paleopathology, we're still learning so much about it, and paleontology as a whole is so important to how we recognize our environment and our ecosystem moving forward. Thank you so much to our awesome paleontologists for joining us today. Thank you for tuning in to this year's Behind the Scenes Reimagined, and we hope to see you here at the Natural History Museum of Utah very soon. <laughs>